And the next way we can know God is by communion. The word communion means fellowship. And there are three dimensions of fellowship with God I want to show you this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Are you still following me? Verse 14. Now everybody read with me. One to go. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. Now read again. We we read it. The one to go. Now we all know this, isn't it? Even if you didn't have to read it. As a matter of fact, sometimes when you close the service, someone will say, No, we have not said the grace. The Bible says, and the communion. Of the Holy Ghost. In the present dispensation that we live now, listen very carefully and don't get confused. God the Father is not walking here on this earth. God the Son Jesus is not walking here on this earth. It's the Holy Ghost that is walking here on this earth. Everything that the Holy Ghost does is to glorify the name of Jesus. Are you listening to me? Yes. So when I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost comes into the same. When I say, demons, get out of the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost comes into the same. So when Jesus left, the disciples were getting sad. They said, no, don't be sad. I'm going to send you another comforter. Are you listening to me? I'm going to send you another comforter. He will be in you. He will be with you. Praise God. And that comforter, he spoke about the Holy Spirit. He said, now I can be with you at a particular point, at a particular time. He said, when the comforter that I'm sending will come, he will be with you everywhere. And anywhere. And that is the Holy Spirit. If we need to know God, then we need to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Men and women who have done exploits are people who have known the Holy Spirit. And that's what the Bible says, quench not the Holy Spirit. Quench not the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit because it's the one at work now. I need to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I need to say, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge your presence. Holy Spirit, I know you are here. If you ever hear the voice of God, is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Praise God. So I need to know Him. And the way I know Him is by communion. By fellowship. The word communion means fellowship. In this church, there are a few people who are close to me. And because we have fellowship, when we're talking, we laugh. They can even tease me. Are you listening? I'm pastor, but we talk, they will tease me. We will joke, we will laugh. Did I ever come to that point with them? Because we have fellowship. Praise God. I can say, see your belly the big old, it won't be past my say, no, you won't be past. Okay, make this stand. Now can you come and tell me this time? Eh? Not everybody can tell me that. But the people I'm having fellowship can stand with me and say, they maybe compare our belly. Can you see how it is? So when you begin to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, there is nothing you can tell Him. Yes, yes, yes. You say, Spirit of the living God, 
Come with me, I'm going to the toilet. Now we continue talking in the toilet. Ah, that's a friend. Why? Because you have is somebody understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There is nothing you cannot talk to him because he becomes your friend. He's your friend. He's your friend. When you talk to him, he will give you an answer. Last time I was listening to I was listening to Benny Hinn. Last night, while my son was having those issues, and he said something. Kenneth Copeland is a very senior man of God. He's the richest preacher in the world. Praise God. He's so wealthy that he buys aeroplane and gives some people as gifts. One time, he went to Australia to preach, and he felt very sick. Very sick, he could not get up to preach. I heard him he say that. And then he said, Why? He was addressing the Holy Spirit. Why is my condition like this? He said, You touched Ben. He spoke against Ben again. But what he didn't know, he spoke against the anointing. He didn't say anointing, I'm speaking against you. It was Benny Hinn. He said, you touched Benny. The Bible said, touch not my anointed, not do my prophet anyhow. As deep as he is in the kingdom of God. He went to Benny. He said, God said, if you don't forgive me, he will not forgive me. I touched the anointing on you. He said, Benny, Benny felt very humble because he's a man he has great respect for. He said, I forgive you. He said, if we are friends today, it's because of that incident. And Copeland got away. Otherwise, he would have been there blasting in tongues, confessing the word. I'm healed by the side of Jesus. Everything is okay with me. Ah, 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 nothing is changing. But because he has communion with the Holy Spirit, as he spoke, the Holy Spirit you touched Benny. He flew down to him. So then he touched you, forgive me. I know, Pastor, what I heard Benny say. He said some of the things that believers say about men of God, even the devil will be scared to talk like that about us. Ah, Pastor. He said, they can't hear you, you can't have a one. Ah, that man of God. Listen, every man of God is God's servant. If they don't anything, their father who called them will check them. You are not called to check them. Are you listening to me? That is not the ministry. We are not called to judge them. The one that called them will judge them, not you. And if you try to judge them, the anointing and the grace they carry will fight against you. I don't know why I'm saying that this now, but that's a diversion from my message. The grace and the anointing of God upon them will fight you. They may not know. Benny didn't know yes. that the anointing on him was fighting Copeland. Yes. But thank God he had communion with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit spoke to him. As we begin to have communion, the Spirit of God will correct our errors. Are you listening to me? He will show us the way forward. He will teach us the things that we do not know. He will show us the things that will come to pass. Are you listening to me? You will not have to be running after any prophet anymore because the Spirit of God is speaking to him. Communion with the Holy Spirit. Number two, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen. Second Corinthians six fourteen. Am I saying anything this morning? Yes, Only a few people are hearing. Have I said anything this morning? Yes, sir. Verse fourteen. 
Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship, somebody say fellowship. fellowship. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? Here the Spirit of God refers to the believers as righteousness and to the unbelievers as unrighteousness. It refers to the believers as light, as unbelievers as darkness. He said, listen, don't you are not calling you. You are not in the same level. They may have more money than you have. They may have more wives than you have. They may have more money than you have. They may have more children than you have. They may have more properties than you have, but you are not on the same level. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Is it going to be all the only here? What do you mean by an equal yoke? Sorry, I may have to call you up here. Please come up. David, you can come up with me. What about a few of you look for Is any person shorter than David in this auditorium? Any person? Okay. He's even tall. Please get me one child fast, fast from the children's church. So we can see them. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has the righteousness with unrighteousness? Go bring another one when you cross one. Come. Say, praise God. Okay, they had me there. Alright, stand there. Now, if I'm going to put a yoke on these guys, I'm trying to find something that looks like a long stick or a long wool, whatever. Long is there. You can bring your bozella. If you okay, bring that. Now, when horses plow a farm, they put a yoke on them. Right? Big number, please come. But you're about the same height. Right? Now, come and stand. Now, when horses plow a farm, they put a yoke on them. Right? And they draw the yoke to plow the farm. So if I put the yoke on these two people, the job will be very, very easy for them as they draw the yoke. Praise God. All right. So this is a yoke on two righteousness. Right. Now if I put a yoke on unrighteousness and righteousness. Uh, come close, come close, come close. See, we're in trouble now. There's no way they can walk well. So the Bible says, don't be yoked with unbelievers. Because they will destroy you. If your best friends are unbelievers, then you're in trouble. Praise God. If your best friends are unbelievers, then you're in trouble. If the people you go to give you counsel are unbelievers, then you're in trouble. The trouble may not manifest now. It may manifest after 10 years. Are you listening to me? Because they will tell you your wife is giving you a problem. You know why? Because you have only one wife. If then the three one give you a problem, you go sleep for the other one room. You go take jealous and then they will say, I want to settle with you other. Come back to another room. Praise God. Then you will finish it, take one, take the third one. By the time you finish training the children, you send them to Europe. They will build house for their different mothers. They will live in your own house. Ah. So at 65, you will go to market and be granny pepper, make it take on cook. Why? Because we got a cancer for not believer 15 years ago. And true to it was sweet because they wanted you to take care of the children. If you went to the other woman's room, the other one will come and beg you the next day. Say, no problem. 
school fees has to be paid. By the time you are done with that, you don't worry. Go and buy a line. After the bill three building the house, the man won't know. He said, just quarrel with a pack of for house. He said, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of this house. I'm tired of this house. Hey, if you're tired, I go now. Two days for house. Okay, make I go. Yes. They come out. By the time you know it, she's living in one two place. Huh? How? We're on board. Hey, John, no boy. Ah, white man. <laughs> Why that is settling down? Do you know why I say, I'm, I say you want to go like your mate too? I be not good pass for you. I, I tell you, say good pass for me. Okay, go. <laughs> By the time you know they are all set to, they don't even need a man at that stage. They want to enjoy their children. But this is useless, man. Everybody is gone. Then I'm 65. Oh, well, Larry, look at my yucky. You know where the. Yeah, how do you say that? You hear me, but I must make it no go. I hear me when you get near you. Even the bus too. How long did it take for the consequences to come? 15 years ago. So the Bible wants you. Don't have fellowship. Trade with them. Do business with them. Greet them. Draw them close so that you can draw them to Christ. But don't let them be your best friends. You can do practice. You know why? Should I tell you why? Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Am I making any sense to you this morning? Yes, sir. Verse 33. Be not, help me to complete it. Be not, be not, be not, don't let yourself be deceived. Evil communication corrupts. Good manners. Evil communication. We corrupt good manners. So don't be deceived that you can miss with them, make them your best friends, and remain who you are. No, it does not work. Because very soon you stop coming to church, they will teach you a woman by women. You're going to church now. Me, I thought you had more sense. You want to go and donate money to pastor? Have you? Ah, by the time you know it, those words will begin to ring in your mind. And then you begin to take action. So don't be deceived. You communicate with them, evil, it will corrupt your good manners. Totally. Mm. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I think I'll stop there and I'll continue next Sunday. But on Wednesday, what am I going to speak about on Wednesday? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of of the body of Christ to know our God we need to have fellowship with his blood and with his body 